the competitiveness and just the fire, the fire in, in the circle. Competition, a necessity that establishes order and superiority. It's so underground, it's, it's one of the rawest forms of competition. In the modern world, individuals can compete in many forms. Execution is a, a big thing with battles and competitions. Most importantly, just smoking the other guy. When I hit the floor, it's nothing else. Everything zones out and I hear the music, and that's what I love doing. Stay tuned as we trace the steps of breakdancing and explore the world of b-boy battles. Coming up next on Long Story Short. We're here to tell you what, what we, we represent. represent. We are the groundbreakers. We are the, the innovators, the newsmakers. We set the bar and then we and stride then over we it. And then we stride over it. We long to conquer our dreams so we can tell you our thoughts, our ideas, our, our story. story. In short, we are who we are. And this, and this, and this, and this is our long, our our long, long story, story short. <laughs> Breakdancing, a street dance style popularly referred to as breaking or b-boying. B-boying is one of the most craziest, like, out there acrobatic dances that came from hip hop. Hip hop and breaking is this celebration of individuality. The art of b-boying is pretty much um, doing acrobatical moves in rhythm to the music you're hearing. Breakdancing, along with MCing, DJing, and graffiti, make up the four fundamental elements of hip hop. The reason why I love it so much now is I love creating, I love the craft. I see this as an art, and again, I say this like physical poetry. It's just people and just unlock the creativity that I had inside of me, you know? Like, it just taught me how to be free and be creative. And the whole thing's freestyle, it's none of that 5, 6, 7, 8 stuff, you know? It's not choreography, it's not, it's not, you know, hip-hop dancing, it's, it's b-boying. And um, it's really about that moment and the conviction and commitment to that moment. As a form of dance that emanates from hip-hop music, the b-boy roots stretch back to the early 70s. It was originally started back in the late 60s, early 70s, for um, street gangs. Instead of fighting with knives and guns, the gangs from South Bronx, New York, began to battle each other with music and dance. It's a positive way to get out negative energy. B-boys have a lot of animosity, you know, they have a lot of energy that they want to release. Instead of fighting, gang banging or whatever, they take it out on the floor, battles and call somebody out. Battling is something that, that's part of human nature. Now with dancing, it's something positive because instead of killing each other, you're just killing each other on a dance floor. Like hip hop, b-boying has its own distinct culture. We got the style, you know, the way we dress, 
the, the shoes, the fat laces, I mean, all that still pertains today. Hollywood style is really the, you know, the classic vintage New York style, you know, the whole posturing and, and, and a lot of the original moves, the early foundational moves that had kind of been lost over the last few years. When you're dancing, there's a certain rock and there's a certain bounce to it. And that's, that's really integral to its history and roots, which come from like, you know, African dance and uh, the African drums and just uh, James Brown. For a while, b-boying was able to retain its underground status. And uh, we got this VHS tape that had been dubbed about 30 times. And by the time it you know, made it up to, to Calgary, Canada, it was, it was barely viewable. But just that spark was enough to just really ignite something with us. Um, one of the earliest dancers that, that I was exposed to was uh, Ken Swift out of the Rocksteady crew. Um, and he's just he, he's a very well-known dancer, been in the game a real long time, and just has like a super supreme clean style. It wasn't long before the media elevated breakdancing to the mainstream stage. The movie Flashdance, when I saw what, what was playing on the movie, I was like, wow, I want to be a dancer just like that. Flashdance was late 83, and then the movie Beat Street came out in early 84, and that pretty much set the, set the pace. Because after Beat Street, then the movie Breaking came out, and by that time, it was pretty much mainstream. After mainstream U.S. exposure, breakdancing soon spread worldwide. I did a tour in the Middle East with Curtis Blow that lasted about two and a half months. And we were in Afghanistan and Kyrgyzstan and, you know, uh, really just unbelievable parts of the world. And, One side of the circle, you're like, man, I wonder what those guys got from Korea. Or I wonder what those guys got from Australia. From the Middle East to the Midwest, the b-boy style has captivated hearts across all races and continents. First and foremost, it's a dance. Um, it's really, it's really easy for people to, to confuse it with this acrobatic um, kind of stunt show. But you know, first and foremost, it's a dance. I love b-boying. It's been a part of my life for as far as I can remember. Um, one thing that really attracts me to it is just the beauty in people's styles. You know, when I'm doing head spins and I'm spinning like an ice skater, I'm dizzy by the time I stop. But once I catch that grounding and I catch the audience, I'm like. There's some misconception that b-boying is like all about the moves and all about just moves, you know? But there's a real essence of hip hop that, that speaks through b-boying, which is uh, unconditional love. To earn the coveted battle bragging rights, b-boys must first put their bodies through some rigorous training. So how, how do you practice uh, freestyling and just improvising your dance? Uh, you drill a lot of moves, you drill a lot of combinations, you drill a lot of uh, dancing, you drill, 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 and then you make an instinct, and then you just let the music, again, you let the music tell you what to do. I train roughly about like two to three hours a day. But on like, um, Saturday, Sundays, I try to take a break because that's when I try to take it easy. Um, I try to get a session in at least two hours a day. For me, it's all about the diet. You are what you eat. You know, you gotta diet, you gotta stay light. You're practicing about 30 hours a week and you're watching your diet. It becomes this, you know, it's, it's almost like a professional athlete. Besides physical training, Committing to their dance also means changing their lifestyles. For some, that includes leaving home and moving to another country. When I came to the U.S., I originally I came alone. I just kind of one-way ticket to Florida um, with my suitcase. Sometimes, it means overcoming a nervous breakdown. I was a really shy guy growing up. Um, I mean, to even think that I would be dancing in front of people, much less a whole bunch of people, forget about it. You know, 
Like, cause when you go hit the circle, at first it's nervous. You feel nervous because everybody's watching. Cause you care about what people think, you know? But then after a while, through music and through expressing yourself, it doesn't even matter anymore. Even with all the sacrifices, for b-boys, the thrill of battle makes it all worth it. You know, it's the ultimate rush when you're spinning on your head. You can't explain the feeling. It's one of the best feelings in the world, especially when you kill it in front of a ton of people. Killing it, meaning performing and uh, amazing the crowd. Tonight we're here in uh, Daly City at the uh, like Sarah Bowl. Tonight I'm doing an exhibition with uh, three other people. Now they've never seen each other before. Um, they're out from all over the place. Ty's from Sacramento, Miracle's from Arizona, so it's a, it should be uh, interesting. I guess people just wanted to see us battle and thought it would be a good matchup against each other, so. Uh, Chai. Chai's like, Chai's a little guy, he's uh, very hyper, like, he, I, he, I mean, he has a lot of energy and I, I feel he's gonna do good. Yeah, like tonight I'm pretty nervous, but I'm pretty excited at the same time, you know. It's like, you know, what's not to be nervous about? But I'm pretty confident, you know, I'm going in there with a good mind state. I, I haven't really seen Johnny from Rock Force in a long time. Um, so I, he's like a wild card. He, I don't know what to expect from him. He can go crazy. Whatever is going on outside of the outside of the circle just goes away once I go in. So once I'm in the battle and I get in the heat of the moment, it's, it's like being another person. And like like I say, it's like my alter ego when I battle. I don't have set moves when I go into a battle, but I have set attitudes and set ideas, like set themes that I want to express and portray. Every time you hit the floor, it's like an old different picture of viewing about the dance. I just lose myself with the music and then just go crazy. You just gotta listen to the music. You have to have musicality, you know? You gotta listen to every little music. It's a communication with the music. So when I'm doing repetitive motions, or when I'm just kind of freestyling, I'm just caught up within the music. But the driving rhythm to every b-boy battle is the invisible hand that controls the beats, the DJ. When I'm DJing for a battle, I try to watch the dancers and try to move with them and change the music with them and, you know. You can kind of tell when you play the song just a little bit too long and you try and just blast in the next one and get the energy back up again. Yeah, the music isn't background music, it's definitely the script of, of what's happening. So um, you become an instrument, you let that music really just tear through your body and it really dictates your movements. I still get nervous when I DJ. You still. Because you're looking for new music and you're trying to play experimental stuff, you still kind of think, are oh, the kids going to like this? The battle was pretty tough. Everybody had, had some good rounds. I think I kind of like ran out of um, energy. Like I was breaking out my lungs, like uh, taking every breath. I, did, I guess I could have worked on my stamina a bit more. And I fell in the flip too, so I was just like, uh, you know, I'm just really hard on myself. I critique myself a lot. I felt the energy from the crowd. You know, the crowd means a lot to a lot of b-boys. I accomplished the mission I, I came here with, and that was to have fun and 
and do work and do what I do. I felt disappointed because uh, I came in with a plan, a really, really hard plan, and I only executed half of it. Um, they didn't tell who the winner was, but it was pretty much a judge upon the crowd. So, I mean, I know who really won. While nobody likes to lose, learning how to overcome a battle loss is an essential step every b-boy must go through. Um, there's nothing like getting smoked for your first time, you know, and really getting put in your place. And that's what makes a break you as a dancer. To me, every time I lose, I take it as a learning experience. So I, I honestly went in there knowing that I probably wasn't going to win, and I just really want to have fun and learn from it. But behind the glory of winning, physical stress and injuries should not be taken lightly. You're, you're doing back spins, elbow spins, hand spins, air flows, everything is against the floor, so it's like, man, <laughs> a lot of injuries. Mostly, like, if you do a lot of, like, sporadic air moves and stuff, you're probably gonna get a lot of wrist injuries. Man, you go through, you go through rug burns, you go through bruises, uh, bruised knees, uh, sprained ankles, sprained toes. A lot of moves, like, you know, freezes and stuff. It's gonna probably hurt your, your joints, your muscles. I back my knee and I rolled my ankle, stuff like that, and it's just, because I do gymnastics too, and you just really gotta rehab your body. You don't wanna overexert yourself, and you do wanna rest. So, I was dancing on minor injuries, like nothing that will stop me. I've been spinning on my head since 83. I mean, I probably got, you know, thousands of miles of head spins under my belt. I mean, you know, I mean, I ain't as good now as I was back then, but I'm still doing it. And uh, it's a blessing, you know, I've gotten hurt before, but I'm still doing it. I think breaking really chose me, um, rather than me choosing breaking. The way it came into my life was just really trippy. It was like, all of a sudden, I was just completely passionate about this thing that I had no knowledge about or couldn't do for um, But I was just so into it, and I just couldn't understand why. And it, it never left. Um, and that's probably even the crazier part, is that it just never left after all these years of surgeries and bills. I have like a couple of knee problems, but you know, I don't let it hold me back. I just kind of just change my style around. The style of dance is dedicated by the moves performed by each individual. I was always into power moves, even back, you know, back in 83, you know, the West Coast was always known to do the dynamic stuff. My favorite move is uh, kind of, it's James Brown. So I do like a swipe and I come like this, and I James Brown both sides, and I kick through and go like that. A lot of the times, if, if the time is right and the moment just happens, and I'll do moves that I've never done before, and you know, that's accomplishments with it in itself. Of course, when some moves can't be executed as planned, they can always fall back on acting. But if there's a certain move where you crash and you can't and you can't convert to, to clean it up, hey, you just gotta play it off like, yeah, that was dope. See y'all, you know. As breaking launched into the commercial world of movies and television. Some b-boys have turned an underground art form into a way to make a living. You get props as a b-boy if you're in that underground flow where you're just battling, competing. You get flown overseas to do certain things with all-star crews from other countries. B-boy actually opened up a lot of doors for me. And, um, you know, TV, commercials, uh, being able to do shows. I did the, the movie called You Got Served with B2K, went on tour with them. You know, you go to audition, and if you do something spectacular, oh, you, you got the job. Despite positive exposure in the media, some b-boys feel that their culture has gotten lost in translation. 
sometimes the media, you know, you get things get lost or things get, you know, not told the right way. So they'll get their version of what hip hop was or what deep one was. I just felt like the media and the way that, that this dance is, is being presented other than what we know within the culture was just really commodified and materialized. Besides the media, the general public also has misconceptions on the b-boy culture. When people don't know about the fundamentals of it, they don't understand, you know, the music, they don't understand the, the dress, they don't understand the whole thing about it. So of course they're gonna pigeonhole everybody and say, oh, just because he's wearing blue or he's wearing red or black or yellow, he's in the gang. So the misconceptions we're breaking, um, it's all about the flare windmill, or we're all always dancing to rap music. Um, what else? We're all gangsters. We're all hoodlums. We're all stupid. The misconception is just like, oh, that guy could do head spins, dynamic stuff. He's not really being soulful expression. It takes a lot of work, you know? It's not something that you learn every day. Pretty much, b-boying has a stereotype of, oh man, that's just for kids, why are you still doing that? But no, b-boying is an art. It's a form of exercise, it's a form of dance. You know, I mean, look at me, how old I am, and I'm still in shape. B-boying is like doing gymnastics. It's like going on to an aerobics class. With years of battles under their belts, these established dancers have advice for the next generation. All right, you want to become a b-boy, you want to learn these moves, you have to really go to practice and be true to yourself, because it's no joke. Kids nowadays, they got to have that passion in it. Some of them do, some of them don't. I encourage people to do that. You know, um, get off. You know, get off the internet. Get off YouTube and go out and find out. Feel the energy. You know, meet the DJ. Look at the records. You know, look at the people's faces. Smell the energy. You know, be scared. Go in there, intimidated, and overcome that. Every every day, there's a new guy on the scene. So it's just that rush, and you know, people find out who you are. You get that props. Take you over all over the world. You know. Pop culture is just really something for the people, and um, you know, we should protect it. And just there's not a lot of things in life where you you know you can be yourself anymore. If you can commit to sort of the evolution of the dance and influence the dance enough, it's like you kind of stay alive forever. Your your moves and your style and your memory stays alive in, in the dance forever. And I think that's what a lot of people want to do.